ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಗಣಾನಾ ಗಣಪತಿ ಹವಾಮಹೆ ಕವಿಂ ಕವೀನಾಪಮಶ್ರವಸ್ತಮ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣಸ್ಪತ ಆನಶೃಣ್ವನ್ನೂತಿಭಿಸ್ಸೀದಸಾಧನಾಧಿಪತ ನಮಃ ಸದಾಶಿವಸ್ಮಾರಂಭಾ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾತ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪ ಬಂಧುಗಣ ಟುಮಾರೋ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಟು ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಈಸಿ ಮಚ್ ಈಸಿಯರ್ ದ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ನಾಸ್ಟ್ರಲ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯಾಮ ಬಟ್ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಸ್ಲೋ the number of rounds is not important we have done 28 we have done 30 is not important how slow you do that alone matters prana ayama ayama means lengthening so the more you lengthen the more you get absorbed in the nadi shodhana we start with the left always beginning with left inhale inhale through left exhale through right and then inhale through right like pendulum go there and come back so inhale through right exhale through left that is one round inhale exhale inhale exhale pendulum no gap gap will be there inhale small gap exhale small gap again inhale small gap exhale small gap in inhaling sense of touch here here in the tip in exhaling om no om in inhaling sense of touch fix the mind there exhaling om small gap in between very absorbing very useful if you practice for 3 to 6 months in life you will not have nervous fatigue and emotional fatigue you will not have bp and all that those things are just as if removed with hand and thrown out but it is always uh, emphasized that the food should be proper while doing pranayama you cannot have all kinds of stuff like this part is this and that they are incompatible compatibility will not be there even for dieting they are not compatible leave alone pranayama the dieting people they have to keep away from all this stuff so very simple life begins with food so some vegetables some raw wheat product anything not refined you should not leave alone eating you should not even purchase the refined product you should not look at that shelf bread means raw wheat bread rice means brown rice you have to be kind towards your body when you are eating white bread or uh, refined rice this basmati etc you are very uncharitable to your own body you are putting it through very uh, illness you are very uncharitable the glycemic index is so high for these foods so much of sugar is released into the system in bursts big bursts of sugar go into the system it puts so much pressure upon liver etc one day nothing will happen one week nothing will happen one month nothing will happen one year also nothing may happen 
but in a period of a few years the accumulated effect will be bad therefore raw wheat products only anything made of raw wheat raw rice no oil no oil at all no no sometimes uh, <laughs> they are said as saying popu <laughs> you cannot do it in water you have to do it in oil only right with water you cannot do it with oil only you have to do it okay half spoon oil half spoon is too much one fourth spoon very little that is the idea just for emphasis sake we say like that so no oil or very little oil and uh, lots of vegetables leaf vegetables etc leafy vegetables and uh, moderate food this is very essential for pranayama otherwise uh, night time late food night after 8 no food 8 is the limit in fact it is better after 8 just you you brush the teeth and all that so that for that night you won't eat any more over <laughs> so the job is done for the night the first thing after dinner brush the teeth so suppose something is offered no you know you cannot eat because you have already brushed the teeth how can you eat like that so that way very moderate food is taken then pranayama body will be very light mind will be very pure so nadi shuddhi is very useful very simple not at all difficult single nostril requires lot of practice nadi shuddhi the more you practice the better the benefits are better so we will do tomorrow onwards then uh, the being being meditation we will continue with it because we are studying that only so what we study and what we meditate some correlation must be there so pretty much the same meditation how to be it is a question i will explain that question and we will do those things as part of meditation some prayer as usual but so we are 30 minutes meditation time i have now told 45 minutes told i told really so we will do 30 35 minutes and conclude and the rest of the meditation sessions will be more or less same one more on tuesday one on wednesday those of you who stay back will have some meditation in the morning at 7 on thursday also why not have meditation i am not asking you to stay back but those who stay back we can have meditation friday morning meditation to hoga hi the the people will come and we will have some very basic meditation session we will have so friday saturday sunday up to that the whole week will have meditation <coughs> can you say something about shiva mahimna stotram in sanskrit literature it is one of the toughest text shiva mahimna stotram authored by a gentleman called pushpadanta acharya very beautiful verses but uh, it is called narikela pakam in poetry there are a few pakas paka means food preparation poetry poetry is also like a preparation of uh, food for the mind so there is a draksha paka like you are eating seedless grapes not seed wala seed wala means seed comes in the way so seedless grapes suppose we are eating how do you feel so the poetry will be like that kalidasa's poetry megha sandesham kashchit kanta virah guruna swadhikarat pramattah shapena stangamita mahima varsha bhogyena bhartuh like that the words the matter the sentiment the flow everything is like draksha eating seedless grapes yakshas chakre janaka tanaya snana punyodakeshu 
स्निग्धाया वसति रामगिरीश्रमु आषाढ़ प्रथम दिवस हाउ सिंपल इट इज आषाढ़ प्रथम दिवस दि फर्स्ट डे ऑफ दि मंथ ऑफ आषाढ़ आषाढ़ प्रथम मेघमाश्लिष्ट सानुम द मेघा हेज कम द क्लाउड हेज कम एंड इट इज सिटिंग ऑन दि स्लोप ऑफ दि मौंटेन मेघमाश्लिष्ट सानुम व प्रक्रीडा परिणत गज प्रेक्षणीय दर्श इट लुक एज इफ एन एलिफेंट ह्यूज एलिफेंट विच इज वेरी ब्रूटिश has gone and it is attacking this mountain side it looked like that the mount the, the black cloud sitting there it looks as if from a distance he is an elephant going and attacking this mountain peak like that it looked and uh, that mountain that megha that cloud he saw then uh, dhoma then he felt like sending a message of love to his beloved he is sitting in south india ramagiri chitrakota ramagiri etc south india deep down in the south whereas his beloved is in alakapuri alakapuri means in the himalayas in uttarakashi beyond that his beloved, there is a town and in that town his beloved is there he he is separated from his beloved and he remembers her and sends a message of love megha sandesha so all draksha pakam very beautiful verses removing verses is it from megha megha duta megha sandesha one and the same the same book is called like that so this is draksha pakam then there is another thing called narikela pakam narikela is कोकोनट सो कोकोनट मीन्स यू हॉव टू ब्रेक इट इट्स नॉट लाइक सीडलेस ग्रेप यू हॉव टू ब्रेक इट फर्स्ट ऑल दट कॉयर शुड बी रिमूव देन ए हार्ड शेल विल कम एंड देन द शेल एंड द कर्नल हैव टू बी रिमूव वेरी टफ यू कैनॉट डू विथ हैंड यू नीड एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट so you remove the kernel from the shell the job is not done you put in the mouth and then start grinding it then amo oh, this is very tasty you will say that this uh, shiva mahimna stotram is like that <laughs> it is a narikala paka i am afraid of that book you will be reading the verse and it makes no sense you read one more time no sense no read one more time something familiar so the students are all waiting is <laughs> <laughs> the verse sitting before you now what to do so you need all instruments means dictionaries and then take us vyakhyana all these things are needed keep them before you and make something out of it but by the time you make the meaning out take the meaning out extract it it is very beautiful this is shiva mahimna stotra there is a demand from students in new jersey that i should take it i am you don't tell anybody from new jersey <laughs> i am seriously avoiding that till now i am diverting it to some other things brahma sutra bhashya no problem but this pushpadanta this is a problem the verses are very tough but it is a beautiful description a glorious description of lord lord shiva shiva mahimna stotra very beautiful poetry in kailasa the question is say something about shiva that's why i'm saying a few things in kailasa kailasa ashram publication is there with hindi translation some translation is there so that we can make something out of it and they recite it daily kailasa ashram people like we recite ganga stotram here they recite shiva mahimna stotram hmm is it that one and the vachana 
Ah, he has done it. Yeah. Only people who have strength in Sanskrit can do it. Otherwise not. <clears throat> Quantum physics and consciousness, can they be reconciled? What is the rationale in calling Atman as consciousness or awareness? I think quantum physics and uh, consciousness could be reconciled. I think so. Uh, and uh, uh, there are a few books on that line. There is one gentleman called Amit Goswami, a professor of physics in the University of Louisiana, somewhere. Oh, Oregon, not Louisiana. Okay, University of Oregon. Okay. He knows. And he wrote a book about consciousness and quantum physics. Ah, what is the name? Self-aware ah, self-aware universe. That is the name of the book. I read it. At least half of it I read it at that time. I did not have the. I do not have the book now. Afterwards I gave it away. Somebody gave it to me. I read it halfway and gave it back. He makes uh, some connection between quantum physics and uh, Atma and all that. Very interesting reading. Does he arrive at any conclusions? What conclusions could be there? What is there to conclude? Quantum physics is quantum physics. Atmanjanam is Atmanjanam. What is there to conclude? There is nothing to conclude. So we need not expect any conclusions from the other. Only whether he presented the subject matter coherently or not. I think he presented well. And he tries to make some connections also. In that direction, it's a good effort. I'm not very sure of it. <clears throat> Overall, physics and Vedanta go very parallel to each other. For example, mass-energy equivalence, space-time equivalence, all these are anticipated in Vedanta much, much earlier. And also the observer's contribution to the observation, that was also anticipated by Vedanta much earlier. And then anirvachaniyata, it cannot be defined in specific terms. This anirvachaniyata is the uncertainty principle of Heisenberg that was also anticipated much earlier. Like that, there are quite a few Earlier, in Vedanta, we say, matter is epi to consciousness. Epi means the consequent, later. Whereas, science proceeded on the premise that consciousness is epi to matter. There are neurons and therefore knowledge takes place. Something like that. So, knowledge is a chemical process like that. To that extent they believed. So they worked on those lines, but now they concluded that a thought is as much a product of matter as matter a product of thought. This much they concluded. In our own life it comes to our experience. When you have a pure heart, pure thoughts, your health is good, physical health is good. And when you are doing physical exercise, etc., your mind will be pure too. So when you are angry, the chemistry of the blood, etc., gets disturbed. And when you do pranayama and keep the body healthy, then mind also will be healthy. Like that, eh? mutual. So, one, the AP of the other, that kind of idea is no more valid. So, 50% they have already arrived in the direction of Vedanta. 50%. Another 50% they become Vedantins. Therefore, like that, there are correlations. And uh, truth is one. Truth cannot be two. Scientist's truth is different. 
spiritualist truth is different. It cannot be like that, right? Truth is one. Whether a scientist recognizes it or a spiritualist recognizes it, it must be the same. Therefore, uh, both are traveling in different directions. A scientist travels in the outward direction. For the spiritualist, it is all inward. All inward. There is no outward. We say Jagat is Mitya, etc. Brahma Jagat Karanam and all that. The entire focus is ignore the world and be within. That is the idea. Atma Jnanam it is. Brahma Jnanam uh, it is more Atma Jnanam than Brahma Jnanam. They, they say Brahma Jnanam bolte hai isa, but it is uh, mainly Atma Jnanam it is. So it is more of Hinduism. In, in, do, <laughs> Hindu, Hinduism it is. Hinduism is in doing. Hinduism. Uh, therefore, uh, so the journey of a spiritualist is inward journey. The journey of a scientist is outward journey. But uh, both are traveling towards the same goal. That is the ultimate truth. So there must be some correlations between the two. So this way I can say some such general comments, nothing specific. That book is worth looking into. One of the books that came to my notice. There may be a few others like that. Then, what is the rationale in calling Atma as consciousness or awareness? This is the rationale. Fair enough question. What is the essential matrix of the individual? Is it blood or bones or flesh or tissue or eyesight or faculty of hearing or mind or thought or intellect or ego? What is, what is it? It is the knowingness. The person is a conscious being. Satchit is the matrix of the person. These are all there. These are all having their origin in the Satchit. That is the essential nature of the person. Atma means essential nature of the person. That is the meaning of Atma. Not person, essential nature. That is the meaning of the word Atma. You can use it for person, you can use it for other things also. Atma of necklace, you can say that. The answer is equal to gold. You, you can proceed like that. Atma of gold, you can say. Protons. <coughs> Protons. Electrons are negligible, no weight. Almost no weight. Neutrons are nothing but protons only, except for charge. Kya ho gaya? Protons. Then what is the Atma of proton? You can ask like that. So Atma means the essential content or matrix. That is Atma. For a person that happens to be the knowingness, the chit, that is the essential content of the person. Therefore we say, Atma is awareness or consciousness. We say like that. That is the rationale. Uh, Maharaj will ask question. Why you are so much against the manifest consciousness? Hmm. And he said it's, it's all burden. Ah. Manifest consciousness. It is all burden, all samsara only. Manifest consciousness is all samsara only. What is there in it? All nanatvam. So plurality. Likes, dislikes. Seeking and avoiding. Also limit, making person limited unnecessarily. So, manifest consciousness is samsara. In fact, it is always emphasized like that. Patanjali says it. Dosha darshana bhyasa, he says. See the fault in it. See the fault in it. Even uh, alcoholics, anonymous people say that. The alcoholic, uh, he doesn't uh, look at alcohol as if it is a vicious thing, a, a visham. It is poison. He should look at it as poison. He doesn't look at it as poison. He looks at it as a wonderful thing. That's why he is a slave to that. So now what they do, alcoholic anonymous people, they train him. 
they put this idea in his mind, it is poison. Understand, it is poison, poison, poison. This is called dosha darshana. One time saying won't work. So tell him, morning to evening, we have a proverb in Telugu. You have a small dwelling in the ear and go on telling. <laughs> like that. <laughs> that is how they say. Chevilo illu kattupiri poru on You have your dwelling here. Just sit here. You manage to have a dwelling here and go on telling him. Alcohol is poison, alcohol is poison, like that do Japam. Then it will sink into his mind. Once it sinks, he will not touch it. Anyway, so, dosha darshana abhyasa, one time samsara mithya hai, like that one time is not enough. Say it, mithya, unreal, Dukkha, source of Dukkham. Say it, say it. No, no, it is Sukham also. Are, uh, what we are, we are talking of Vairagya and now Sukham also means what Vairagya is there now? What is the effort and uh, kya baat hai? You should not say that. It is... Suppose uh, alcohol is poison, means, uh, no, no, it is not necessarily poison, it is good for heart. Suppose the God says that, <laughs> then will he ever leave it? He will not leave it. Ah, yeah, he supports me. Uh, come on, we both let us go. He will say. <laughs> leave this fellow behind, he is useless. Leave him behind, let us go. He makes friends with this new person. So, that, that is not how it is. Sri Krishna says, Janma Murtyu Jaravyadhi Dukkha Dosha Anudarshanam. This he has put as a qualification. Go on seeing the do- dosha. Anu, day after day you see it. There is dosha, birth, old age, death, and uh, diseases, vyadhi. So all these doshas are there in the limited uh, person's uh, limited life. So you have to get rid of them, you have to get moksha. You see that dosha again and again and again, you see it. Suppose uh, I say, body is not atma, body is uh, after all impure, this and that. Then you should not get disturbed. No, no, body is not impure, you should not feel that way. Because vairagya is required. Anyway. Wearful being. being. Yeah. That is what he stresses. Like many other Mahatmas. Yeah. He, he emphasizes on being. Ahamasmi Brahma Ahamasmi So Ahamasmi Brahma Ahamasmi This is his emphasis. He says, I am Ahamasmi. Yeah, Ahamasmi. Ahamasmi Sadabhami. Like that. These are his emphasis. All emphasis is on that. This is the question. Swamiji, how to be? That is the question. Beautiful question. How to be? You see, uh, you should uh, develop a lifestyle that is conducive to be. Remember, Vairagya. Because uh, the opposite of vairagya is becoming. And the opposite of becoming is vairagya, which is being. They are in the opposite directions. If you want to be, you should stop becoming. No becoming. Enough. I don't want to become anything. Somebody asked me, I was traveling. Somebody asked me, what is your next goal in life? In the flight. I was reading something. Eh? What is next goal in life? Then uh, I asked him, shall I give you a very fair answer? Will you be uh, willing to accept it? <laughs> so anyway, forget about it. So, there is no goal. What is the goal? There is no goal. Really, the, the discussion was there. He was a young man, uh, so in twenties. He wanted to know what is this uh, lifestyle, etc., 
So, out of curiosity, goodwill, goodwill curiosity only, he asked. I told there is no goal. I thought, what is the goal? I told him no goal. Can there be a life without a goal? I can understand, because his age is like that. I told him, it can be, dear young man, it can be. Because uh, we run after a few goals, like you are doing, I too did. Now I am done with all that. That is the meaning of sannyasa. I told him like that. Because he was uh, sincerely asking. Therefore our lifestyle must be conducive to being. Suppose in life you have a few goals to achieve. Means becoming. Goal is becoming. Then uh, the question is no more valid. Because uh, you cannot travel in towards east and west simultaneously. Like uh, Shankara says, Ganga Dwaram Pratipitsuhu, Kashi Nagara Nivasi, like that he begins. So you want to go to 80 east or 80 west? You tell me. Now itself you tell me. No, no, I first go on to 33 I will tell. No, okay, now we entered on 33 north. Now you tell, 80 east or west? No, no, I will tell you later. Are? Another five minutes the junction is coming. No, no, I want to go on both. How? You cannot. The junction comes and now you have to split. You tell why. No, no, I want both means how are you going to do both? That is how it is. So, being and becoming, they don't go together. You first decide. I mean, I, I don't want to be very harsh, etc. So, we should not have many ambitions and many goals. Uh, young people need to have some goals. I appreciate it. They, God bless them. They should work and get a lot of prosperity in life. Their prosperity is my prosperity. I am not against it. I am talking in the context of Vanaprasthas. Uh, so, see whether you have, you can say enough to becoming. That is general lifestyle. Then specifically as a discipline, how to be. Number one, asana you should understand. What is asana you should understand. I gave, I, in one month time or one and a half months time, I have hammered on that point so much that asanam, yes, it is aphorism, it is sutra. Sutram is defined as vishvato mukham. It has so much meaning contained in it. It is pregnant with meaning. Sthira Sukha Masana. Sthira Sukha is Satchidananda. It is Vittala. It is Brahma it is. And uh, so, Asana. That is number one. I don't explain it anymore because so much we have said and done. Then uh, another way to be is Prana Vekshanam. Very tough. You have to practice a lot. I have touched upon it for four or five days and then in my syllabus I could not repeat it. Now I am not going to repeat it. So you have to do it. Uh, controlling is pranayama. Neutral watching is vikshana. Two different disciplines. Okay? So, both pranayama has a different set of goals. It helps in a health and purification of mind, etc. Whereas, vikshanam is just being. It absorbs, it provides that kind of an absorption. Then, the most important thing, now. Do meditate, meditate on the now. You say now. Once in a minute or once in 30 seconds? Now. Now. You are in the being. Then uh, you deliberately be conscious of the being. You go into being. Four. Like that, one, two, three, four I am saying. Now I forgot the number, doesn't matter. Then... Contemplate upon Akasha. Just Akasha. You will resolve in the being. Then, 
watch the body, you will resolve in the being. Then, watch the mind, you will resolve in the being. Then, drop the mental effort. Just do that. Drop the men- Don't say how. Just drop the mental effort. You will resolve in the being. Then, say a long Om. Under the Om merges into silence. You, you piggyback. Do they call it like that? Piggyback yourself to that Om. And as it merges into silence, you will merge into silence. And that is the silence means the silence of the being only. So these are some of the ways in which we have to establish ourselves in the being. We have done. We will do tomorrow again. Ah. Ah. Very wonderful. Ah. Uh, then learn a little bit and don't think the next breath right away. Yeah. Just, just, just let it go. Yeah. yeah. There is no hurry to take breath immediately. You know, it is a long breath anyway. So, nok means edge. When you say om, om doesn't end with m. It continues. The silence is also part of the om. And as the m ends, m ends, samadhi begins. That is the silence. Therefore, take the advantage of that Om and go into silence. That's why in meditation also I have pointed out uh, in very practical way how to relate to Om. The moment you listen to Om, you should drop every mental effort completely and merge into the silence. That kind of a habit should happen. Om. Now you are in silence. And that silence should prolong. So that way, one has to discover the beauty of being. It is very powerful. Being is very powerful. And it is silent and powerful. And uh, it is rock-like. The reality it is. There is nothing abstract about it, nothing nebulous about it. It is rock-like reality. And then uh, there is an emanation of joy from within. That is the being, Satchidananda. It is a, it is very real. It is not that some utopian thing that we are talking about. It is very real. In fact, uh, it is you. You are never away from it. The prarabdha is that our mind deceives us. That is our prarabdha. Mind, in, in the, as part of its movement, presents a world and it believes that the world is real and makes us believe that the world is real. This is our prarabdha. You just don't be ruled by the mind and its idiosyncrasies. What mind knows is nothing of any value. Please understand, what mind knows is nothing of any value. That being is your true being. It, you are never away from it. Only unfortunately, we talk of sadhana, studies, this, that, so much we talk. Just to convince ourselves that we are never away from the Atma. We are the Atma. So it's only a matter of contemplating and gaining that foothold in the reality. Gain foothold in the reality. Being. Meditate. You are Brahman now and here. You need not become Brahman. You are Brahman now and here. You are never away from Brahman. Even when you think that you are ignorant, samsari, this and that, we have had to realize all these things are our imagination. You are not weak. Your mind is weak. You are not ignorant. Your mind is ignorant. You are the Brahman, no one here.
you are not attached your ma it is brahma attachment is a brahma it is an illusion that i am attached you are not attached it is a brahma aisa brahma ho jata hai i think more than that therefore you are that being you are that brahman navan here so that answers that question okay i'll say okay sir i'll say It's a very relevant question. You see, I tell you one thing. The question is, I am raising a question in the context of that question. If I follow guided meditation CD or cassette, am I becoming dependent or should I try to do meditation independent of this cassette? if that is the question my answer will be not necessarily because you are dependent upon the outside when the person or the ego is operating whereas in meditation it is a suspension of the ego that happens and it should happen and therefore ego is not in the picture therefore as a per, if a person suffered if it if it is the effort of the person then it becomes a dependence a crutch it becomes like a crutch but it is not the effort of a person because person is not there person should not be there therefore if a guided meditation voice helps you to suspend the person then you don't need anything other than that therefore uh, you become independent i am not saying you should depend upon the cd you become independent but don't be in a big hurry to become independent not necessary you, re- you rely upon it as long as it helps you to suspend the ego surrender the ego and uh, you uh, you uh, you, uh, you gain an absorption my god what more you want why you need uh, what you need is depth and absorption not how it is achieved is it achieved by the person's effort or is it achieved by surrendering the person's effort that is not the point therefore i suggest don't dispense with cd guidance immediately you get hold of some cds and some half an hour sessions and depend upon them nothing wrong in it shravana manana vidhyasana depend upon them for at least for some time when you gain a confidence not only confidence practice sometimes the cd is not there you do it yourself and you find it is very good then you don't need the cd you can suspend it therefore don't be in a big hurry to drop it you hold on to it nothing wrong you it is not uh, to be said it is not to be described as the dependence crutch those words do not apply in this case they apply elsewhere but not here so please do that then pranab ah okay you say no go ahead your question was concluded uh, my my second part hmm I I don't think anything I don't have any answer to that question please drop it uh so pranabandhanam hi somya manaha he somya manaha pranabandhanam that is a statement in chandogya upanishad so uh you see prana is vital life 
uh, it is the vital force. The life that pervades the entire body is the prana. Uh, therefore, this manaha is their mind. This mind is tied as though with a thread to the prana. Mind is tied like that. So that is the vakya. Prana bandhanam hi somya manaha. You see, I always pointed out that prana is one power originating from Atma. Then manaha is another stream, vijnana shakti, originating from the same Atma. So, now the point is, uh, what is the interconnection between the two? Because they both originate from the same source, you know. This is prana shakti, this is vijnana shakti. Uh, and so, is there any interconnection between the two? There must be, because they are originating from the same source. Now the point is, which is connected to what? Is prana connected to manaha or manaha connected to prana? Both kinds of descriptions are there. Because both are originating from the same source, so both are interconnected, so you can give importance to prana and make manaha subordinate to prana. And that is the statement, prana bandhanam hi somya manaha. In a different situation, you can make prana, the movement of life in the body, subordinate to the manaha, the mind. You can do that because sankalpa jayate, you know, manaha, mind makes a decision and then limbs move according to that decision. Action happens later. So this way, uh, so sankalpa first, then manaha, uh, then prana later. So both are there. So in day-to-day -day life, let us look at our life. I am working, doing some work or going around and fulfilling some of the needs, some chores, etc. In this situation, it is the mind which is in command and the prana is working under the command of the mind, right? The mind decides to go to Walmart and then legs and hands help us, take us there. So mind is in command. That is the regular life. Then come to the pranayama. In pranayama, it is the prana which is dominating and mind is resolved in prana. The reason I ask the question uh, That is how it is. That is how pranayama is that. It gets totally yeah. In fact, this year I did not said it. Last year also I said, what I said is, in the daily life of various chores, it is the prana which is subserving the manaha. Whereas in pranayama the opposite happens. Manaha subserve prana. Like that I used to say. This year I did not say. <laughs> so, prana bandhanam hi, so, mya, boli hai. Hmm. No, no, involuntary actions law, mind is there. Involuntary mind is there. You see, they say there is a bigger mind and a smaller mind like that they say. The, the one part of the mind, it, it is responsible for all voluntary actions. Whereas medulla or something is responsible for involuntary actions. Like that they say. Therefore, in fact, they say it is the mind which controls every limb. Like that they say. Therefore, doesn't matter. We need not take a very pakka stand on all these issues. We know very well, prana and manaha are two streams of power, kriya shakti and vijnana shakti, emanating from the same source. That much we know. And they are interconnected. And in prana, it is the manaha which is made subservient to prana. That is the vakya there. Prana bandhanam hi somya manaha. Actually the whole, whole mantra, uh. 
Pranabandhanam is Somnya. And about sleep it is. Yeah, about sleep, you know, in sleep, prana is there. Prana is there, but manaha is not there. Where did this mind go? It is resolved in prana. It is tied to the prana. Like that. Very nice. Like understand the asanas and the practice prana vaishnam. But a few things you said, I, I presume you're saying practice it throughout your waking state. Like say you said every 30 seconds, you're in now. Mm, I said it only for meditation. It's all only for meditation. Meditation, yeah. Because while doing daily chores, you will not be able to do it. And it will be, if I gave that impression, I take it back because it will become a problem to the daily chores. If somebody is preparing chapati <laughs> and follows this advice, chapati becomes black. So we should not have it like that. Therefore, while doing chapati, <laughs> uh, yeah. So there, while driving, etc., you should not be being and all that. Just do the job all held perfectly. Only during meditation. Then what happens, you know, you will discover your ground. You see, you have a home in New Jersey. Wherever you go, whether New York you go or Pennsylvania you go, you are in a way connected to that home. Psychologically connected to that home. And you will go back to your home. That kind of a home in the heart as the being we have to discover. That is our home. Once you discover it, it doesn't matter that you should be at home only all the time. You can move around and do a few chores for the life to move on. Uh, and you are, uh, you will go back to your home. We should be like that. You see, the purpose of meditation is like this. As of now, the mind is uh, all the time agitated and with some difficulty we make it calm and quiet for some small time. So the, the natural state of mind is agitation and meditation, calm, calmness and quietude of the mind is achieved with some effort. Right? This should get reversed. So there will be natural state of quietude in the mind and when the need comes, the mind becomes active and it works. Aisa hona hai. That is meditation's goal. That's why I was saying all the time, don't speak much. Maintain that inner peace. Don't disturb it. It is wealth. Protect it. Like that I was saying. So what happens is, it is very practical. The calmness and quietude is the natural state. And the movement is depending upon the need of the situation. When the situation demands, the mind moves. And the rest of the time it is calm and quiet. This is what is called a simple, without and within. That is the simplicity. The mind is so simple, so free from fickleness, that it is quiet and calm, spontaneously. And when the need is there, it works. Because it is a tool, you know, mind is a tool. Now it is the tool. Now I am using it as the tool. Earlier, kya uh, tool? Dog wags the tail, whereas instead of the tail is wagging the dog. I saw how life. <laughs> so, uh, therefore, uh, we have to discover that natural state. Being is the natural state. Being is the natural state. That is your true state. That awareness of the being is your true state. Unfortunately, we have come out of it and unnatural has become natural. So you are saying is once you meditate in the morning. Meditate in the morning and that, that maintain that. Uh, and for that, 
you may have to repeat the meditation in the afternoon and in the evening. Then the calmness becomes more and more stabilized. Like that. And the lifestyle is important. And lifestyle. Suppose the life, suppose I meditate for half an hour and then catch a bus and go to Atlantic City. <laughs> then what meditation? Suppose again in the middle I do meditation in a karna. They give a room also for some <laughs> nice price. <laughs> so do meditation. And again go to the slot machine. Then in the evening again meditation. It won't work like that. What I mean is I gave an extreme example. So lifestyle should not be disturb, disturbing. It should, not, it should not disturb the meditative state of mind. Mind should be calm and quiet. Huh. Memory, memory is a... You are right. Yeah, memory is past. When I'm trying to work in my functional day-to-day reality, I have to remember certain things. The problem is when I remember certain things, they're tied up and they, there may be some other stray memory tied to that which has an emotional component which can then easily take me away and get me distracted or bring up Yeah, you are right. You see, memory is a double-edged sword. It has its advantages as well as disadvantages. If memory becomes our enemy by bringing out the past, digging up the past and torturing us, making us guilty, hurtful, and living in the past, in the, in the sadness of the past, then this memory is a villain. But you need memory, you know. Even to speak some vocabulary, this, that, some sentences, past tense, present tense, everything should flow. Therefore, mind has its uses. We use it as a tool you use. Memory is part of the mind. Intellect, emotions, they are all okay. Emotions are good. I mean, properly used. All negative emotions are bad again. So, emoting as a faculty or a function is okay. Compassion, love, uh, so sympathy. These are all, emoting is needed. Rasanubhuti, even to study Ramayanam, you need emoting mind. Therefore, it is needed. We use it. But it should not become villain. Memory also same. Intellect also same. Therefore, we use the mind as an instrument, as a tool. No problem. Chale. Archita tasya kausalya Priya ke kayavam shaja Atasambhavitam tabhyam Sumitra mai chedishvaraha Archita tasya kausalya priya ke kayavam shaja. Atasambhavitam tabhyam sumitra mai chadishvaraha. Archita tasya kausalya priya. Kekaya Vamsaja Ataha 
संभावितां ताभ्याम सुमित्राम ऐच्छत ईश्वर तस्या मीन्स टू दट किंग दशरथ कौसल्या अर्चिता मीन्स रेस्पेक्टेड ही रेस्पेक्ट्स कौसल्या ही डजन लव कौसल्या ही रेस्पेक्ट्स कौसल्या देन प्रिया कैकय वंशजा Sometimes respect also should be there, love also should be there. But uh, all respect to Kausarya and all love to Kekaya Vamsaja, Kaikeyi. Kekaya Vamsaja means this lady who is born in Kekaya's Vamsha. Kekaya is the name of the king. So Kaikeyi, it's Arthaha, Priya, he loves her very much. Then he, res- he respects and loves both Sumitra. Atha Ishwaraha, Ishwaraha is the king. Sumitram Aichat. He desired this about Sumitra. What? Tabhyam Sambhavitam. Ataha. Ataha, therefore, he wanted, he, he wished that Sumitra should be taken care of by these two Ranis. Rani, Rani means queens. The Kausalya is the queen whom she, he respects. Kaikeyi is the queen whom he loves. He has both respect and love for Sumitra. And therefore he wanted that Kausalya and Kaikeyi, each of them will consume their respective portions and wash the vessels. <laughs> <laughs> they, they should not do that. They, they should respect and take care of Sumitra. He wanted it that way. He did not say it out. Aichata. <laughs> <laughs> he wished that way. In fact, they followed his wish. So, suppose the three brothers are there. The mother gave a piece, some sweet to the elder brother. And another piece to the younger, only two pieces she has. And as she looked into their faces meaningfully, take care of the middle one, both of you. And they share with him. Ultimately, he will get more. That is how Sumitra got more. That's why Sumitra gave birth to two sons. He wanted it that way. It's not that he doesn't love her or any such thing. He, he loves her and respects her. So he did like that. Archita tasya kausalya priya kekaya vamsaja. Atas sambhavitanta bhyam sumitra maichadishwaraha. Te bohudnyasya chittadnye. Patnyau patyur mahik shitaha. Chero radhar dhabhagabhyam. Tamayo jayata mubhe. Tebo hudnyasya chattadne patnyau patyur mahik shitaha. Chero radhardha bhaga bhyam tamayo jayata mubhe. Te bahudnyasya chittadne patnyau patyuho mahikshitaha cheroho ardhardha bhaga bhyam. Tam Ayojaya Tam Ubhe <laughs> Patyuhu Mahikshitaha Patniyau Pati Patni Very close words. Words themselves are very close. This is one thing I did not like in English. I like English because it is so close to Sanskrit. 
But when it came to pati patni, pati patni, how close the words except na, both are so close. As if, as if the two words are also wed in an Indian style. Something like that. Very close. In English, wife, husband, no connection. <laughs> Not even one syllable is common. One syllable is not common. This is something undesirable. <laughs> so, whereas in Sanskrit, they call Pati Patni. You cannot separate the two. You say Pati Patni is included in it. Just add a na, it became Patni. Said Patni, Pati is inside included in it. So, very interesting language. Sometimes language reflects culture also. I mean, here also it is very sacred, nothing like that. But somehow Indian society seems to be very established as a, in the institution of marriage. Whereas other societies have some problems in that institute. In a general way I told. I thought probably as a sannyasi I can say it. Because now about marriage I can comment, you know. Instead of married people commenting about marriage, a person like me can comment. Anyway, uh, so patyuhu patni, the two wives of this pati, Mahikshitaha, he is the king, the Sharatha. So, bahudnyasya, he knows many things, he is a scholar, so he knows how to uh, how to interact with the, uh, his wives, three of them. And so he knows how cheru has to be distributed. Cheru means the paisam. The prasada has to be distributed. All that he knows. He is a scholarly person, well-informed person. So, these patnis, kausalya and kaikeyi, chittajne, they know the heart of the sharatha. So he made, put it, it is in two vessels, now distributed half-half, one to Kausalya, one to Kaikeyi he gave, and he looked into their faces, looked at them and looked at Sumitra, she is also around, so they understood his heart. And then what they did? First thing they did, Ubhe, both of them. So very spontaneously, without consultations and all that. So, Kausalya took half of her share and put in a vessel and put in the hands of Sumitra. Immediately Kaikeyi also took half and added to that. So Ardhardha Bhaga Bhyam. Kaikeyi got her Ardha. Out of that Ardha, another Ardha of that. Half of the first half she gave. Kaikeyi also gave. Ardha Ardha. So one fourth plus one fourth. Now my um, Sumitra got two um, half, two one fourths. Whereas Kaikeyi got only one fourth, and uh, Kausalya also got one fourth. So ultimately Sumitra got more. Very nice. That's why she got two sons. So Tam Ayoja Tam, they have given to her, and so she got what she deserved and according to the wish, wish of the king Dasharatha. May say again, Te bahudnyasya chattajne patnyau patyur mahikshitaha Chero radhardha bhaga bhyam tamayo jayata mubhe Day after tomorrow, I am going to a home for a bhiksha evening. The occasion they invited me for bhiksha is their 46th marriage anniversary. 46th, that is the occasion. So very, uh, very, uh, very wonderful bondage, pati and patni. So the words are like that and uh, in some cases, in many cases, in the relationships are like that. So, Dampatyam is considered very, sac- very sacred. Patan, this Bhavabhuti, the, the poet Bhavabhuti says, 
ಭದ್ರಂ ತಸ್ಯ ಸುಮಾನುಷಸ್ಯ ಕಥಮಪ್ಯೇಕಂ ಹಿ ತತ್ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥ್ಯತೆ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಎಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ವರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಪ್ರೇ ಟು ಗಾಡ್ ದಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸುಮಾನುಷ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಾಂಪತ್ಯ ದಿ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಲೈಫ್ ಆಫ್ ವೈಫ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಸುಮಾನುಷ ದಿ ದಾಂಪತ್ಯ ಶುಡ್ ಫ್ಲರಿಶ್ ಶುಡ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ದಟ್ ವೇ ದೇ ಶುಡ್ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಪರ್ they should be happy like that he prays so uh, i felt like saying that in the context of pati patni and dasharatha his love for his dear wives and all that okay that entire verse is about grahasthashrama you are saying what dhanya grahasthashrama dhanya hai dhanyo grahasthashrama really the true very true om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamay vavashishyate om shanti 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 hi hari hi om tat sat shri krishna arpanamastu